Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to our slash Entitled People, where people truly believe they can do what they want, when they want, because they're special. You guys know the deal. And in today's episode, a Karen won't stop letting her boys go into OP's yard. And guys, you'll never believe what she tells police when they confront her. Guys, the stories are outrageous today, so I hope you enjoy them. And as always, don't shake your heads too hard. Oh, and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss these wild stories. Email link is also right here if you want to share your post or link your story. So I've been working bars since the age of 18, and the rule of thumb with drinks usually is you don't leave them unattended. If drinks are left unattended, they get collected. Anyway, this one night, it was closing time. Last orders were called, and the bar had been shut down, and we're now at the stage of the night where bouncers are asking people to leave. The glass collector we had that night was collecting glasses, and came across a table where one glass had a drip of drink left. They asked the people sitting at the table if the drink was finished with, and they replied yes. So the glass collector did their job, and they put the glass into the glass wash. And here's a side note. We have posters on all of the walls and behind the bar. To not leave drinks unattended, otherwise they will be collected. I was sweeping up the floor when the glass collector approaches me, saying there was a woman at the end of the bar and she was angry, asking where her drink was and demanded it be replaced. It turns out this glass had a small sip of drink left in it and now it's gone. At this point, it's 2am, the bar's closed, restock has been done, and it's time for people to leave. And because the glass collector had approval to take the glass, I said we would not be replacing the drink. Also, even if they didn't have approval for the glass to be collected, this woman still left the drink unattended, and the rule is, if a drink is left unattended, it's to be collected. The woman then storms behind the bar to where I was sweeping. She's seen me say that I would not be replacing the drink, and she demands I make her another one because she paid money and she wasn't finished with it. I replied that there was only a drip of alcohol left in it, and that she had left it unattended, also explaining the importance of not leaving drinks unattended. I then said if the bar was still open, I would have allowed her to pay for another one, but the bar's closed and tills have already been sent to do cash up for the night so there's nothing I could do at this point, and then calmly explained that she would not be having a drink replaced, and that she needs to get out from behind the bar as she can't be there. And this is where it gets good. The woman gets irate, throws a tantrum, and demands how she's a customer, and she's always right, and that I will give her that drink. I said there are rules I have to follow in my job, and that my hands are tied, and she needs to go before she's forcefully removed by the bouncers. She's not taken kindly to this, and now she's in my face, shouting profanities and still demanding a free drink. At this point, I've had enough, so I call a bouncer over to remove her from behind the bar because she can't be there. The woman is pissed that a bouncer has been called over, and she turns back to me. And within a split second, she lunges herself at me with all of her force. She body checks me to the ground. I'm a small person, but I've always known how to take care of myself with self-defense classes. So I managed to get up and take her down as well, and lock her into place on the floor, while the bouncers work around me to get her up and out of the bar. The whole time, she's still swinging her arms and wailing like a toddler who's had a toy taken from them. She's managed to catch me and claw my face with her nails. The woman was barred on the spot for attacking a member of staff, and the police were called. She was then arrested for assault since it was all caught on the security cameras. It completely baffled me how entitled this woman was acting over a drip of drink. It's been a while since that happened, but still to this day, it does give me a bit of anxiety. And now, I always make sure the latch door is locked when we're closing up for the night. The moral of the story, which should always be a given, is when you're out drinking, please don't leave your drinks unattended. Honestly, that must have been one heck of a drink if it was worth all that, guys. Like, I could never fathom attacking anyone over taking away a drink that was left unattended. Like, was she a drunk Karen who just wanted compensation? Or is she someone who's just out of control when it comes to alcohol and she gets violent when drinks are taken away? A lot of people seem to agree with the latter. This person says, sounds like Miss Out of Control needs to go to AA. She's not doing normal social drinking. It could be either, right? But I've read enough of these stories to know that she might have just been a legit angry Karen that had some drink left and it was taken away. And pair that with potentially being drunk and you've got yourself a Karen who's running on liquid courage, ready to tackle anyone. So a story I heard you read has sparked my memory of something that happened over a decade ago. 
My wife and I had just moved into a newer neighborhood that was still being developed. The first week we were there, two kids kept coming into my yard to run around and play. They were about 10 and 12 years old, and my yard was the biggest in the entire block. The first time, I told them to leave and to not come back. The second time, it was the same, although I was a bit louder. The third time, they came back with their mom, and she was demanding to know why I was kicking their kids out of my own effing backyard. I told them because I don't want them there, and I don't want to be responsible if they hurt themselves. I've now given them strict verbal warnings to not return, or I'll call the police for trespass. Well, they ignored me, and they came back half an hour later when I was out for a run. When I came home, I went to the kitchen to grab a drink, and boom, there they were. I was straight onto the phone with the police, how two unattended kids keep trespassing onto my yard for the third time, after I've spoken to the parents. The cops came out 20 minutes later. I didn't confront the kids, as I wanted them to be there for the cops, and I also didn't know where they lived. I spoke to the officers, and I told them they're still there, and I want them gone and the mother spoken to. The cops were friendly, and they spoke to the kids, took them back to their house, and I had peace and quiet for like 30 minutes, until bang, bang, bang on my door. It was the parents. They lost their mind at me for calling the police, and they were screaming at me. I reminded them that I warned them that I would, and they utterly ignored it, so they got a visit from police. The cops had told the parents to not let their children come to my place anymore without working it out with me. And if they were called back for the same reason, then a couple of charges would be laid. So, being on the verge of bursting a vein, the mom then demanded that I give their kids written permission to play in my backyard. I'm of course trying to hold back laughter. I'm thinking, after you screamed your lungs out at me, you think I would give your kids permission? I told them to politely F off and to never step foot on my property again. The next day, I went to the hardware store and I bought a heavy duty lock to put on my gate. Well, to say the parents weren't happy was an understatement. They were fuming. Once again, the kids came around and they tried to open the fence, but they saw it was locked and they screamed F you. They went towards their house, and 10 minutes later, the mom this time and the two kids pounded on my door. I simply opened the door, told them I'm calling the cops, and slammed the door in their faces. And I did call the cops. All the while, the mom's trying to break down my door. This time, the cops came faster, like 10 minutes. I found out they were pretty close by. And the police spot the three of them walking back to their house, and told them to come back to my house to talk. So one officer talked to me, and the other to them, and I quoted the incident number from the day before, so he could get up to speed, and I retold my side. As I'm finishing up, the mom screams out to me that I had given them written consent and permission to play in my yard. And then I locked it just to spite them, and to get them arrested. Both the officer and myself asked to see the written consent because I never knew it existed, and the cops had to follow up on every claim I guess. Surprisingly, the woman pulls out a piece of paper from her pocket that said something to the effect of, I, the owner of this address, hereby grant Jimmy and Joe permission and consent to freely and openly play in my backyard. I also take full responsibility for their safety while in my yard. I agreed to babysit them for as long as they want to play in my yard. And the thing is, it was signed by a signature that didn't even resemble my real one. It'd be like comparing the logo of Starbucks and McDonald's. I just burst out laughing, and I asked her if she really tried to forge the signature of someone she didn't even know the name of. Before the cops could react, I pull out my wallet and bring out my driver's license, which where I live shows my signature and the cops have a slight look of bewilderment and amazement on their face. I'm just speechless at this woman's stupidity. The police just asked if I wanted to press charges for obvious reasons, and I gladly say yes. The mom was charged with trespassing, which is obvious, child endangerment, and child neglect as she gave them permission to enter a stranger's yard without permission, and attempting to forge a signature and pass it on as true to an officer of the law. I never saw her again after that. I still don't know where they live. Oh my goodness, guys, the entitlement of some people, right? And that forged letter had me rolling. And you know what? You have to give that lady props for even having the guts to do something like that. Like the whole time writing that letter, never once did she stop and think, hmm, maybe I should not be doing this because it's a little bit out there. And the forged signature, guys, holy moly, was that ever the cherry on top. Like, faking a letter is one thing, but having the audacity to fake a signature without even knowing the person's name. Like, what the heck did the signature look like? I wish OP posted a picture, guys, because that's absolutely amazing. 
When I was 10 years old, I broke my arm. Myself and a group of friends had been playing at the swing park and I fell off the climbing frame. The first thing I felt was an immense pain in my arm. It was so bad that I actually felt sick from the pain. My friends understandably freaked out and they ran off in search of an adult, while a couple of them stayed with me just in case my arm fell off or something, as this is a terrifying situation when you're 10. Eventually my friends came back with one of their dads. He quickly checked my arm over and he was around 80% sure it was broken. He offered to drive me home and he would tell me jokes in an attempt to cheer me up. I was still in immense pain but I wasn't worried about my arm falling off anymore. Eventually we got to my house and my friend's dad explained to my mom what happened. He's such a great guy, he even offered to take my mom and I to the hospital. My mom politely declined because the guy had to go to work. Once he left, my mom asked me all the usual worried parent questions. What happened? Where does it hurt? Do you feel sick? And that's when she called my nice aunt to see if she could drop us off at the hospital. She was working and she couldn't leave to come get us. And that left only one option, entitled Aunt Karen, which is brilliant. Surprisingly, Aunt Karen did seem somewhat worried when my mom told her what happened and she got to our house within 15 minutes. Hell, she even brought me sweets to cheer me up. It honestly felt like I was in an episode of the Twilight Zone as she never did anything nice for us kids. Everything's going about as well as it could, with my arm in a massive amount of pain. We get to the hospital, and of course there's a wait, so my mom takes me towards the children's area so I could play with the toys while I waited, entitled Aunt following behind. I settled for playing with one of the plastic trucks so I didn't have to move my broken arm. Everything was fine, until this one girl, around 6 or 7, asked me if I wanted to play kitchen with her to which I immediately say yes to. She set out some plastic cups for a tea party and we play quite happily. That is, until entitled aunt notices and she decides to intervene, like the witch she is. She comes over to us and says, What are you doing, sweetheart? I tell her I'm playing kitchen. She then says, I thought you were playing with the trucks. Why don't you go get one of those trucks? They're so much cooler for boys to play with. That's when I tell my aunt, but me and Sarah are playing, she asked me to play kitchen. My aunt then says, Ew, little boys don't play kitchen, that's gross, that's for girls, come play with a truck. The girl, hearing the conversation, chimes in and says, But my dad's a cook, and he's a boy. And I say to her, Yeah, and Uncle Mike's a cook, and he's a boy too. Entitled aunt then says, But he's gay, you don't want to be one of those, do you? My mom hears this and she says, Karen, he's playing with that little girl, leave him alone. Entitled Aunt looks at my mom and says, You really don't think that's weird for him to play kitchen? My mom, getting pretty impatient, says, No, no I don't. Now either leave the little ones alone or you can head home. Entitled Aunt rolled her eyes and she went back to my mom and sat down. Sarah and I talked and played for a bit, and she asked me about my arm, and I told her what happened. I found out through the talk that she's gotten her ears pierced, but the company hadn't cleaned the equipment properly, which led to her getting her right ear infected, despite her mom cleaning it every day. And despite the hassle she was going through, Sarah was pretty proud of her ear piercings, which in turn made me think about getting my own ears pierced. I then ran to my mom to ask about maybe getting my own ears pierced with the money I had saved up. Entitled Aunt just scoffed, and she laughed at me, even saying that. And she just made faces of disgust, but she didn't vocalize any of her concerns. After about an hour, I was called to get x-rayed. Basically, I got my arm x-rayed, and it was definitely broken. We were then taken to a little room, where we were to wait for one of the nurses to arrive, and to sort out a cast for my arm. Entitled Aunt had been allowed to join us, but she was still pretty pissy about my mom getting impatient with her. So obviously she dropped a nice demeanor and she went back to being her typical bitchy self. She kept her mouth shut for the most part until the nurse decided to ask the question. The question that would make Entitled Aunt lose her lid. The nurse said to me, what color cast would you like, sweetie? Hearing that, my Entitled Aunt burst in and said, he wants the blue. It's the same color as his top. The nurse asked me, is blue okay for you? At the time, my favorite colors were purple and orange, so I decided to opt for purple because it was less in your face. I say to the nurse, I like the purple one, can I get purple? And hearing that, entitled aunt glares at me. The nurse says, okay honey, a purple cast it is. She then leaves the room, and my aunt goes completely crazy on my mom. She scoffs and says, what? You're not actually gonna give him a purple cast, are you? He wants blue. My mom says to her, Karen, give it a rest, it's a color, okay? If he wants a purple cast, he can have a purple cast. It's his arm, not yours. My aunt replies, but it's purple. 
boys wear blue, not purple. My mom tells her, it's not you that has to wear it. Stop being such a damn drama queen. She then yells at my mom and says, you are loving this, aren't you? You want him to be gay. You're encouraging this kind of behavior. My mom tells her, I just want my child to be happy. And if a purple cast is gonna make him happy, then he's getting a purple cast. Aunt Karen's not letting it go. She tells my mom, but little boy shouldn't be wearing purple. He's getting the blue one. I'm just gonna tell the nurse that he likes blue. Blue's almost the same color as purple anyways. That's when I chime in and say, but if blue's the same as purple, can't I just have purple? My entitled aunt looks at me and says, look at me. Are you a girl? I tell her, no, but I like the color purple. It's nice. My mom then says, stop it, I'm not gonna have you make him feel like crap for liking a certain color. At this point, the nurse came back, and my mom and aunt argued for a couple of more minutes, until the nurse managed to get a hold of a doctor and another nurse, who quickly asked my entitled aunt to leave the premises. She did, but not without getting the last word in by shouting, you're a terrible mother. You want your son to be gay like this, pointing at a picture of a skeleton with a pink cast on. My mom then proceeded to apologize to the doctor and the nurses for stooping to my entitled aunt's level. They just told her it wasn't an issue. Of course, entitled aunt who was fuming at us had driven off and she had left us at the hospital for another half hour until my nice aunt came and picked us up. My mom had told her about the situation and she picked up a teddy bear for me, which was bright purple. My nice aunt had a good sense of humor, and knowing she could poke at her sister and make her more angry, she was quick to post a picture of the three of us with my new bright purple teddy bear and my purple cast on Facebook, knowing full well that entitled aunt would see it and lose her lid. My entitled aunt actually blocked both my mom and nice aunt on Facebook after this, and we had no contact with her for about two and a half years. She eventually got in contact with my mom, and she sent her a massive apology through text, and told her how she just wanted to be a family again. It turns out she was moving, and since she barely has any friends or family that likes her, she was using us to help her move, because paying someone is far too expensive when she has family to help her. Also, if anyone's wondering why my mom let her back into her life, my entitled aunt was extremely religious, and my mom just believed that's why she was so against the idea of me being gay. Needless to say, no one else had an issue with my cast. Some of the kids at school did playfully tease me about it, but they weren't malicious. They were more excited to sign my cast. Breaking your arm in school apparently makes you pretty popular when you're 10. Anyways, that was a little story about my psycho aunt. Guys, you know what, I'm not even gonna say I'm surprised at the fact that Opie's aunt was so angry over a color. Because some people do get a little bit over the top when it comes to these things. And this person says, Pink was originally a man's color, and blue and white were worn by women as a sign of purity. Purple was an expensive color to dye anything, so that was reserved mostly for royalty and nobility. It wasn't until about the last 60 years that these colored gender prejudices flipped. So yeah, we all know that liking a certain color doesn't automatically make you anything, right? Like some people just like certain colors, and that's totally fine. And if you guys thought that story was outrageous, listen to this one. So this took place in the 1990s in rural Southern Carolina, which is rather important context. My relative Natalie had a wife named Sherry. Sherry got a job as a high-powered engineer for a major international company, and they moved to South Carolina. Wanting to live in a more rural area, Sherry and Natalie found a home that was a converted barn, sitting on about 8 acres, complete with pool, private lake, small fruit orchard, and some open fields. As the property had some electrical drops in various parts on the property, the sellers let Sherry know that there's actually three electric meters for the property, each built separately. The main house was on one, then there was a hookup on a light pole in the orchard, and one more for a well on the property. Go figure. The two meters that were not on the main house were cheap, so Sherry and Natalie gave it no thought. After living there a few months, Natalie mentioned that the electric bill for the well pump went way up. Nothing outrageous, but it went from like $6 per month to nearly $40 per month. Curious, I did some back-of-the-napkin calculations, and I found that a quarter horsepower pump would need to have run 24-7 for 25 days straight to use that much electricity. It was only the two of them living there, and there was no way they could have used that much water. Something wasn't right. And so, I began a bit of an investigation, looking for a leak. 
I follow the water line out of the house, and oddly, it ran off away from the well out into the field. I follow the line into the edge of the woods, behind the barn, and I found, much to everyone's surprise, another well, with its own pump, powered from the main house. So what the hell was this pump in the field for? So I start digging. Surprisingly, that well ran to the neighbor's house, and that's when we finally got the full story. The neighbor was a pastor at the church where the former homeowners attended. They had an arrangement that the former homeowner would let the pastor get his water from the well on the farm property, and the former homeowner just paid the bill. But somehow, there had been an electrical fault to the ground, and the meter was spinning almost non-stop. That's why the bill spiked. So Sherry, not wanting to rock the boat, offered the pastor continued use of the well, if he would fix the electrical issue and get the meter into his name. But the guy refused. He insisted that he had a right to free well water, at Sherry's expense. And the guy got rather unpleasant about it. He then said to Sherry that this is what God wanted, and similar proclamations were hurled Sherry's way. And Sherry's thinking, fine. Her well, her pump. Sherry then gave him a couple of weeks notice and she disconnected the electrical meter. No pump, no water, no longer her problem. So rather than agreeing to reimburse Sherry maybe $80 in excess bills over a couple of months or paying to get the pump fixed and taking over a rather modest bill, we saw a well drilling rig at the pastor's house a few days later. It must have cost him thousands of dollars. To cap it off, Natalie talked to Sherry into doing something else with that well. They did fix the pump. They ran a new water line, built a bathroom with showers, all for their new women-only lesbian campground. The campground didn't last particularly long as a business. It mostly just covered some basic expenses for a few large events each summer. But if not for the pastor's obstinance, it might never have existed at all. Guys, I've heard some outrageous things reading these posts, but what the pastor said to Sherry has got to be one of the most baffling. Like, I'm fairly certain God didn't grant the pastor electricity for free, nor allow him to steal from others, but that's just me. And also, he's not the sharpest tool in the shed, hey? Like, save $100 by spending thousands of dollars. Like, what's that saying? Stepping over dimes to pick up nickels. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash entitled people. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's stories. If you did, hit that thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing so you don't miss these crazy stories. And if you missed yesterday's episode on the channel, it's an r slash I don't work here lady, where a Karen calls her cop husband to deal with OP when she doesn't get served. It's such a wild story, so go check it out if you haven't. And myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.